if she made a point, you better be right because she's not gonna she's not gonna give up on you. Because that's what I feel myself. You sure? I'm damn sure. <laughs> well, she seen something that I did because he was falling, he didn't have any balance. So I'm looking at twenty five players, I can't watch everyone. Right. So why did why did the US team Huh? Why did the U.S. team beat the Russians at Lake Placid? Why did why, why did they win and not lose? Well, in, in, in Lake Placid, well, I guess every every kid, I guess they were all good players, but they must have given their whole life to it at that because you know, like I told you, Brooks told me the Russians had it all these years. Now it's our turn. And that mess is there, right there, must have. And, you know, but he, he was a good coach and he got, you know, you know what happened to him? I told you. Yeah, he probably, when he got, he was, he coached the Rangers after. And he came home from practice over here someplace. And I guess he was dipping in a sauce too much. He's got a car accident, got killed. Yeah. So, you know, this is away from the game. But it was part of the game, but there's so much that goes in. What do you mean? The, the, the living, the changing, the beating people, and, you know, you meet so many different parts of people. You know, when I coach midgets, I bet you a lot of people think when I say you create midgets, they think of a little kid like this. Midgets are 14 to 16 year olds. And the hockey, as you go up level, is two years. Eight, like a peewee's six to eight, and, a, and the next one is eight to ten, ten to twelve, twelve to fourteen. Well, I coach midgets uh, 14 to 16 for quite a few years. And that's where you find out if he's going to have something. How do you know? You look in a midget division. Because after I got, I coached four national teams in four national midget champions, four of them. And then I, I, I scouted for another guy. And, and I used to go watch their practices. And then they just had one kid who was a big scorer. They'd say, hey, Carl, this kid can score. And I'd go watch him. He'd do it. I said, well, I'm going to see if he can do it again. If he can't, then he was just a flash in the pan. He just had a good practice session. Let me see, let me see him do it two or three times. Then I'll pick him. Because everybody can be up to the first time. And you, go in, you get to go in a game, he was a practice player. You get in the game, he would never show up. He couldn't see scared. He was all tight. I said, he's a practice player. I cut him. So that's one I, you know, I cut a couple of times. Because I, and he looked good when they were working out. And when I put a team together and scrimmage, he was afraid of the boards. I used to shoot a puck in a corner. And I'd send one of my forwards and a defenseman in, uh, let me see him go in there and see if he'll go in and try to get that puck. He'd go there and he'd back off. See, no, I don't want him. If he's afraid of the boards, get out, go play tennis someplace. You know, you're not going to play hockey here. And there's nothing wrong with tennis, but you're not a hockey player. You're a practice player. When you go go rent a rink, you know, on Sunday afternoon on the park and play out there, that's a lot of fun. But you can't play this in the league. I said, you gotta get used to looking at the glass too. You know the glass out of I said, you're gonna be playing this league, you're gonna be looking in that glass more than once. Because they when you get here, they'll hit you, you know. And if you can't take a hit, your mother can't help you up there, baby. You hey, you know, that's the way it goes. Who's That's the, where I found them, midgets, and I see good midgets. 
Who's the toughest player you ever uh, coached or saw? Toughest player. You mean physically? Both. Mentally or mentally, yeah. Because there's a difference. Uh, oh, the best hockey player I ever coached was Mark Howe. Fourteen years old, when we were in his juniors at 20, Mark played for me. He led the league in scoring at 14 years of age. When we were in a mix, we were in a Canadian league, American, only American team in the Canadian league. And Mark led the league in scoring at 14 years old. And when he was 16, he made the Olympic team in, in, in Japan. They went to Japan. When he was 16, his gloves are in my ground side. When he, when he went to turn pro, he's the one I told you, well, you know, that's a good, big, long story. But uh, I told him he's going he's gonna to be a Hall of Fame player. And he still remembered that. I forgot all about it. But he just, he reminded me of that. Why was he so good? Why? Oh, he, he was born to be a hockey player. Skate, handled the puck, and just as cool and calm as every, you know. If you went, if you went in on him, that's the mistake you're going to make. But he'd take the jock strap right off of you, you know, with that puck to move around. <laughs> oh, he could, he's something else. There are very few, and, they, and another one was, and that's Gordy's, uh, uh, Murray's the younger one. He, he tried out too, but he, he couldn't, he wasn't good enough. But he's, uh, and Marty also, I had Marty, both of them. They both turned pro, but uh, he's, <laughs> there are so many. But the strongest, but not much between the years, was Serafini, an Italian kid. And he played a, I got his picture down in the basement. He, he was, he's about, when he was 18 or 19, 190, 200 pounds, strong as a bull. But nothing, he couldn't. Well, I'll tell you how smart he was. They had to burn the schoolhouse down to get him out of the 10th grade. That's how smart he was. <laughs> yeah. And he used to carry a knife in his pocket in the, in the, uh, what, the area where they left. When he was going to school, he used to carry a knife in his pocket. And then, you know, I had him. When I'm jumping again now. I had, I, now I got Ronnie on my junior 18. We're playing Windsor. And we were kicking the diggings out of Windsor, about 10, 12 to nothing we had him. And uh, I, he made a couple of bad mistakes. I benched him in the last period. But he could, you could tell him one thing and you put him on the ice, he, you know, you know what the hell is that? I said, Ronnie, don't try to come up the slot. Get it off the boards. So what the hell does he do? right up the slot, and the guy went in and scored it. And I said, and he then when, it, when the game was over and we are taking our uniforms off, his father was his worst enemy. He was always pushing up, pushing up. He said, Carl, he said, I thought you were, you were going to discipline Ronnie. I said, well, wait a while now. What did you say? He has no discipline. I said, and his name was Rex, I said, Rex, how old is Ronnie? He said, 19. I said, you speak of discipline. Who did you have when, whoa, when he was 19? You had him till you were 19. Why didn't you discipline him? Because he said, I said, if you don't want him to play with me, when he comes in, I'll tell him to take that uniform, drop it there, you're done on this hockey team. That's you. You're taking him off, not me. Yeah, he said, I'm, I'm going to discipline him. I asked him, who the hell had him for 19 years? Who's, who's the guy? So right away. And then he took off. Two days later, he called me because I, I, I cut him. 
he said, because uh, I didn't cut him, Ronnie. You did, you did, Rex. And he was almost crying on the phone. He said, Carl, can I come over? I said, yeah, come on. He said, well, yeah, I got come on over. And he brought some beer with him. And he was half crying. He said, I'm sorry what I did. He apologized. He said, Could Ronnie come back? I said, yeah, bring him back. I said, I, I wanted those kind of things. Because you know, I, I felt sorry for him, but he, he was so dumb, you know. <laughs> you know, just, they can be dumb guys, but they, some are good in sports, but they can't think past their nose, you know. But when he did that, when I just, I just got to telling him not to, and he does it. Well, he wasn't thinking. He can't think on the ice. What happens, happens. Game plan? Oh, God, no. But when we got in a fight, you know, I said, I pull a guy off and run, got there. I said, this guy's pushing Jimmy around too much. He said, I'll take care of him. <laughs> and if you came around, he, said, he asked me, what's that guy's number? I give him his number. He said, next time he comes around that end, let him know you're around. That's what I, that's what I used them. And they were afraid. <laughs> Because you got to have that. You know, those are little, little things. So tell me about...